Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm actually surprised that so many people didn't get turned away by the word BizOps. Uh, so let's jump right into it. So why BizOps? Um, despite the title, I'm actually an engineer. I've uh, been an engineer for many, many years. Started as a developer, but over the years, been pretty much in every imaginable role. Uh, and over those years, I learned two things about me. First of all, I'm pretty damn good at what I do. And second of all, I'm really modest. Uh, but th the reason I think I've been pretty successful at what I did is because I always tried to understand the business. So I kind of, I had ideas in my head to doing a talk or doing a blog post about how trying to understand the business helped me succeed. And actually what triggered like a last straw for me was listening to Nathan Harvey at DevOps Days DC doing a talk on rugged enterprise, DevSec, Net, QA, GovOps, I can't pronounce that quick as he can. But his whole point was that DevOps is somewhat of a misnomer, right? Because it has the word Dev and Ops, where realistically it includes QA and includes security and includes all sorts of different practices that are merged together by the word DevOps. But the thing that annoyed me, he still did not include the business part of this. So in this talk, I want, kind of want to talk about how you can and should interject the understanding of business into your day-to-day -day practices. So what is BizOps? Believe it or not, BizOps is actually less defined than DevOps term. I didn't think it could be possible, but it is. Uh, if you're really interested, you can Google it, you can look it up. There's a whole bunch of definitions talking about how it's internal group that's in charge of strategy and vision and synergy and whatever it be. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's everything not tech, right? It's your sales, marketing, it's your HR, like we just heard the previous speaker talk about, uh, finance, you name it. Pretty much any business unit that you have in your company that doesn't directly deal with tech. So the natural question is, why should you give a crap, like, at all? Like, how many of you are actually considered the tech people? Tech, dev, ops, QA, whatever it be. Managers? Business people? Oh, look, there is one in the audience. <laughs> what do you know? Uh, yeah, so most of you, like you would imagine a conference like this, your job is basically develop and operate software, right? That's what you do. Except it's not. Like, your job is not that at all. By the way, I'm going to have unicorns throw out the slides. It's like a cue cards for your emotions. This one is confusion, in case you're wondering. So yes, your job is not really to build and operate software. Your job is to empower the business. Right, and I'll let you think about it for a second. Technology without business, without understanding the goals, is actually useless, right? It doesn't really matter how great your software is or how quickly you can deploy it or how many cool features you put in it. It's completely useless unless it accomplishes a certain business goal, whether it's a revenue, whether it's exposure, whatever the business may be, right? One of the best quotes I ever heard said to me was by CEO of the marketing company, and I use it everywhere I can, is I don't give a damn if my data center on fire as long as I'm making money. And, well, well it's a still real quote, it's a little extended, but it is actually true, right? Business people really don't care what's happening in the technology world. And they also don't know, and they don't want to know, right? All they want to know is that they keep on getting dollars, and those are fears keep on going up. Like, there is a whole concept of marketing technology. I don't know if anybody heard about marketing technology as a concept. It's basically an idea that IT should not exist as its own separate unit with its own PL and whatnot, right? IT should be a part of a marketing group or a report to CIO, right? Somebody who is responsible for business. Because realistically, technology is only there to support that unit. Doesn't work in every case, and I have some issues with it. But it's not a bad premise, right? Because why would IT have its own budget when its sole goal is to support marketing initiatives? So every technical decision that you make should support some sort of business need. I think we can all agree on that. And yes, that includes tool choices. Yes, I don't know how many times I heard that people want to use MongoDB just because it's cool. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, so, as an example, like, we had, we have some legacy subversion servers. If, 
How many people here are old enough to remember Subversion? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we had a couple of legacy Subversion servers that were ran for some of our clients. And at some point, we were like, look, it's 2016. We need to move them to Git, right? And we had a whole bunch of clients running on GitHub already, obviously. And GitHub seems to be the tool of the choice. So why not just move it to GitHub? People started planning. It was all discussed between engineers until I saw the conversation. And I was like, well, we do consulting. And because of the nature of uh, consulting we do, we work with a lot of like, high-profile, large companies. And because we do consulting, it means we do work for hire. And because we do work for hire for large companies, they have real large legal departments. And those real large legal departments insist on a clause that have things like, you cannot let your, the code you write for us be exposed anywhere outside of your domain. No matter how stupid it is, you cannot convince them otherwise. If anybody ever negotiated a contract with like Apple or Microsoft, know exactly what I'm talking about. So just because of that, just because we have clients who don't let you use external sources, like GitLab, right? G GitHub, which is hosted somewhere else, we have to opt it out to use GitLab and host it internally, right? Again, it's very common sense, right? I mean, everybody would think about it, but that's a really base situation. I love Dilbert. And the reason I love Dilbert is because no matter which comic I read and no matter how idiotic it is, I read it and I was like, oh, I know this guy. So specifically that, um, I actually had a conversation <laughs> very similar to that. Um, I was working on optimizing some queries, and I found a bug in a query, like <laughs> bug in some report. And it was early on, I was so happy, I was so proud of myself, I was like, I found a bug, and I fixed it, and I go to like a finance people, and it's like, look, you've been running this report for years, I found a bug, isn't this awesome? And a lady looks me straight in the eyes, I was like, no you didn't. And I'm like, no, 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 really, look at the report, and here was the bug, and here's how the data flow, and she looks at me again. No smile, nothing, I was like, nope. So apparently, their report was the one they were basing all their finances on. It was going to investors, it was going into valuation calculation. So they couldn't just say, no, there was a bug for past years because there was a ridiculous amount of work that had to be done. They had to run reports in parallel for months, if not longer, before they reconciled all the problems. There you go for fixing a bug. But I was so proud, right? I fixed a technical bug. So, like I said before, every technical decision should support sort of business need. And clearly they didn't have a business need to fix a bug, which is not really a bug. There's just one little problem with that whole premise. You do not understand how business works. Like, we as technologists, we have no idea how business works. I mean, I have no idea how business works most of the time, right? And I learned it fortunately really early on. Like, back in the day, um, I don't even know which year it was, uh, I was helping a large marketing company that was sending about 75 million of emails a day. And uh, I was helping them with uh, putting those emails together. And one day they sent me a really ugly, ugly email that they want to send out. And this is actually a pretty representation of it. Like, they want to make sure eyes bleed. And I was like, fine, you know what? I'm used to it, let me deal with this. Except I get a follow-up email, and um, chief marketing uh, asked me to make a background gradient, make fonts bold, and change them to red. <laughs> like, I was like, why? Why? I mean, why? I didn't want to look at it anyway, so like, why would you make it so painful for users to look at it? And he was nice enough, he was like, look, it's going to increase our revenue by 3%. I kind of want to bring the unicorn back. Like, what? And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, but uh, anyway, you know what? Whatever you got to tell yourself to sleep better at night, sure. Like, Fine, you're the customer or you're the client, I'll do what I need. But the next day I was like, you know what, I'm actually curious to your point. Let me see what the fact that email had. 2.6%, not even 24 hours. Hi. 
So let me get back to what I said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's okay. I mean, it's really it's okay because the business doesn't understand you either. <laughs> like, I don't know how many times you had a conversation um, with business people and they said something that you look at them exactly with the same look I looked at those marketing people. Like, why don't we release everything at 12 midnight every night? I don't know, because people like to sleep. But uh, it's very hard for like business people to grasp our approach on things as well, right? So one of the biggest mentalities of like marketing is fail quick or fail often, right? Everybody heard that model. And it's really difficult for like technologies to grasp. And I understand why. Like, we as technologists really want to push like 100% perfect software out, right? We take pride in what we do. Like from a marketing perspective, like 80% working today is so much better than 100% working tomorrow. And it, it's actually mathematically works because like you get 80% of the revenue today or exposure and then you fix it and you can still get 100% tomorrow. As a developer, so you know for a fact you're pushing buggy code in production and it makes you irk inside like nobody's business. So every developer, when they look at the perspective, they only, the accent is on the word fail, right? It's not on the word quickly and often, it's fail. And nobody, like in the tech world, wants to fail, like ever. Finding that we're in this industry. Uh, so it's really, it's frustrating for both sides, right? We don't really realize it, but we annoy them as much as they annoy us. So how do we learn? Like, how do we get better at this? And, uh, that's where DevOps come in, actually, right? It's actually in the premise of DevOps. There's so many different ways and so many different premises that you use as part of your process already that can help you with that. So first of all, of course, is inclusivity, right? You want to include the people who deal with business into your world, right? You want to involve them in the decisions that you're making. And sometimes it's difficult, right? Sometimes it's really, really difficult. But one thing to remember when you're dealing with those people is assume that everybody's trying to do good, right? And it's a very core assumption, right? They're not intentionally trying to piss you off. They just don't know any better, right? So really what we have here, like, we don't, we don't speak the same language, right? They tell us something that makes complete sense in your head, like, <laughs> let's change the fonts to red and make it bold. In your mind, it makes absolutely no sense. Same, same, the, same way it works the other way around. You say, hey, we need to, we don't deploy on Friday. And the marketing goes, what do, you, what do you mean? I have a huge campaign coming on over the weekend, right? We must deploy on Friday afternoon, right before you go home. Like, and that communication is not a one-time thing. You can't just talk to people, you try to understand what they do, and just move on with your life. It has to be a continuous communication. It has to be involved every step of the way. So, Everybody talks to, let's say, project managers, right, or business units when you do requirements, right? That's natural, I hope, for everybody. But how many of you involve, like, marketing people to your sprint planning? One person, surprised. Uh, how many people involve people to post-mortems, right? Two people, but nonetheless, right? It, but every one of those things, in every step of the way, you have to make a decision or this, b b based on what you decide, how is it going to affect the business? And you actually don't know unless you got that knowledge or that representation to tell you that, right? So how many people hate managers? I mean, really, pretty much everybody, right? And I see how many people have a Slack channel dedicated to developers only that you don't allow managers in? Like, I'm actually surprised there's so few. But I see tweets like that, right? I mean, when you're solving a problem and you have manager VP in the channel, like, they just disrupt you. And I get it. Like, so many times I had the conversation where it's like, I can solve the problem and tell you what, what was wrong, or I can keep on telling you what's wrong without solving the problem, right? It's a toss-up. But it's not, it's not always the case, right? You need to judge on the value a person brings versus the title, right? Saying, I don't want a manager, so I don't want a business people in a conversation is moot because you don't... You're denying the value that that person may bring to the conversation. So again, using another, ex another example of what I've done, I was working on a project and it was one of those days where everything like went wrong. I'm talking about the payment processor, it was, it was down, like 
the major processor on the side completely intermittent or failing, so I'm doing like a troubleshooting Kama Sutra with, you know, with a phone on your shoulder, like I'm typing in three different channels, like in 15 terminals. And while I'm doing all that, I have a business guy from the company call saying, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a problem. I was like, no shit. Like, what do you think I'm doing? I was like, no, 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 no. I need you to, like, we have a typo on our terms and conditions page. I'm like, okay. I was like, I need you to drop everything and fix it. I was like, I, 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 I. I was like, I, are, you, are you serious? Like, you do know, like, I, I actually, I understand your business. I know how much money you're losing every minute the thing is down. Like, we're talking about thousands of dollars. Like, this is not the case where I'm completely ignorant. Like, I feel like I know your business. And the guy, I was like, why? I was like, and the guy's like, I have a compliance guy sitting in my office right now, and the only thing that's stopping us from getting our compliance, I forget which one it was, was making that change in terms of conditions which in a long term saves us hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you're like, okay, that actually makes sense. It's weird sort of way, but it kind of makes sense. So the different perspectives are really valuable, right? I mean, again, and that, that, that was a situation where I was, I was sure I know what I'm doing, right? I knew the business, I knew the value of it, like I knew it, and clearly I did not. And it matters even in retrospect, right? Even if he didn't call me in the middle of it, even if it was afterwards, it still matters, right? So talk about post-mortems, right? I mean, this graph should look familiar to everybody, right? User perceived performance, you, you're measuring it 99th percentile, right? All of a sudden you got a spike, you got an alert in the middle of the night, and the next day you're sitting there and wondering what happened, right? Pretty familiar. So looking at that graph, like, honestly, it's still 99th percentile is below the threshold, right? So SLIs are not violated, so there was some gl glitch in the middle of the night, everything is fine, right? <laughs> um, so looking at that graph, how many people think of how many actual users were affected by it? Nobody, nobody, nobody ever thinks about it. But realistically, you can actually get a really cooler picture based on exactly the same graph, how many users were affected, and based on that, how much revenue the business loses. So once you look at that, and once you look at the actual revenues lost, then you look at your SLAs in a completely different view, right? So well, actually, context is very important when you look at different things, right? And actually, it's a recurrent theme when you talk about this type of thing, it's context, right? You need to understand why are you looking at a certain piece of information, why or another? So visibility is very, very important, especially when you're talking about two groups. Like, most of the companies I know that have developers operate, the DevOps tech teams, have their own monitors set up, they have their own graphs, they have their own uh, alerts, and then they have business who looks at their own metrics, they have their own dashboards, right? And it is important that you look at the same picture, right? It's an infamous, is it an old lady or a young lady, right? And you, you as a technologist and business people need to really look at the same context and the same data to make informative decisions. So again, let's look at the perceived performance, right? That's pretty familiar. Clearly, at some point, something happened that jump performance through the roof, right, both east and west coast, right? And that's what you look at, right, as technologies. And then you start troubleshooting, you should start figuring out, right, one of the servers in the cluster died, right, something happened with the code, whatnot. Well, in the meantime, marketing people are looking at the success of their promotion. So, you're looking at this, and they're looking at this. You think context is important? Like, so when you collect the data, when you, and when you set up your alerts, you set up on monitor, the, the three Cs are very important. First of all, you want to collect as much information as possible. You want to monitor everything and anything possible. Not alert on this, just monitor it. Second of all, which people tend to neglect lots of times, you want to be able to correlate their information, right? You want to know why the decline in revenue and deco like blacklisting by Yahoo have any correlation, right? Because maybe the emails didn't go through, people didn't get the promotion, people didn't click through, people didn't buy anything, right? There is a direct correlation to anything. And third of all is collaboration, right? 
you need, in order to get the context, you need it from, to get it from a people who actually understand it, which more often than not is people on the opposite side of the fence, whether it's business or technical. And last and not least, uh, empathy. Um, Originally, when I put the deck together, I didn't have that section, but then I realized that first off, I didn't have enough unicorns. <laughs> so I clearly needed more. And second of all, I feel like it's worthwhile to stress on this point again. I assume that everybody's trying to do good. I know how frustrating it is to deal with managers, how it is to deal with business units, with finance, who are probably the worst by far. They're still even like last century. Um, I know how frustrating to deal with them all, but they're still try they're trying to do the same thing as you. They're trying to make sure the business succeeds. And that's worth just listening to them and trying to understand their perspective. And to close off, I want to finish with uh, Damon's quote. It makes sense because it's good for the business and it feels right because it's good for the people, right? Those are the core premises of DevOps. And that's it for me. I don't know if I have time to any questions. But, and I could take a question, but that's it. Thank you.